Welcome to the XY Advisor Podcast, where it's our goal to help you become the best financial advisor possible and drive the positive evolution of financial advice. Hub24 is an ASX-listed company with over $15 billion funds under management and one of the fastest-growing platforms in the market. Neither a bank nor part of a bank, Hub24 focuses entirely on connecting advisors to a broad range of investment solutions for their clients. Discover why other advisors think Hub24 are the best in the market and access the benefits of choice and efficiency for you and your clients with their market-leaning managed portfolio solution. To find out more, visit hub24.com.au. G'day, g'day, how's it going? What do you know? Strike a light. Clayton here from XY Advisor. Um, nice enough to get re-invited back to pretty much the coolest podcast studio I've ever been in. And uh, originally I was the guest of, of Phrases, but considering we had such a good time last time, I thought, why not let's do it again in your studio? We just like sitting in here, hanging out, talking, listening to ourselves, I think. <laughs> <laughs> not wrong, my man. Um, so uh, there was a really interesting question on XY the other day uh, from Trish, and she was sort of talking about she wants to start a podcast, and that is not an uncommon thing. Um, and, you know, me and you, we've been on this sort of journey well, at least at the XY and, and the um, goals-based advice has been on this journey for a few years now. And I guess we sort of, uh, I guess, maybe early adopter, but not overly early adopter. I mean, they'd been around for like 15 years. Yeah, yeah, compared to what? Early compared to what? Yeah, yeah exactly. Let's just say early in the financial advice space <laughs> yeah. within Australia, within, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, correct. Let's go with that. Yeah. yeah. So we've got a couple of uh, years up our sleeves, but certainly – now it's becoming a bigger and bigger and bigger thing. And so uh, as our discussions often do, they drift to um, f- uh, financial planning and podcasts. So we thought, hey, let's do one on podcasting. So if there's any advisors out there like Trish or others that are thinking about doing their own podcast, then we can give them somewhat of a framework and a structure. Yeah, can I give a big shout out to Trish too because she's uh, firstly she's a legend and yep. secondly um, the, she put a comment on saying talking about the idea of her licensee wanting to you know have a lot of oversight in this in this podcast she wanted to create and um, we we sort of there was a bit of a discussion around the idea of yes yeah you're gonna have to you know licensees don't want to go to jail so mm-hmm. they're, they're gonna want to see what you're doing and especially if it's a new licensee they're gonna want to have this this oversight um, but I actually think I've been thinking about it and. Trish, if you're listening, this is an amazing opportunity for your licensee to get to know, like, and trust you as a new advisor to the licensee. Like, we always go on about the idea that podcasts, you're in people's ears for a long time. They tend to get to know you over time um, and it's and they get to, you know, trust you and know you. So it's actually a really good opportunity, I reckon, that um, Trish is doing this and bringing the licensee, it, you know, a- along with the, for the ride because they'll get to know her really quickly. They'll get to know her integrity and her honesty and how she speaks and all these sorts of things. So they're going to be able to go, oh, she's, a, she's an amazing person, an amazing advisor, even though they've, they've only really just met her. So I think it's – Trish, embrace this opportunity. Yeah, and I was sort of thinking about it as well. And if you if, – if a company was to hire an employee and then that – the role was, say, to do X, Y, Z, but, but now the employee is doing the role plus client acquisition – I mean, that is sensational. Um, there's a couple of big things to avoid. Don't talk about product. Not too difficult. Just don't talk about product. Um, don't talk about individual client names, privacy. Outside of that, um, I mean, t- you know, talk back radio and personal, like answering financial questions on air live has been around for a long time. This is not sort of groundbreaking um, information or, or a groundbreaking strategy. Uh, the only difference is it's pre-recorded instead of live on the radio or on TV. That's about it. Yeah, and also um, part of having a podcast, which we'll get to, is there's a lot of editing involved and going over and checking. And you know what? Sending it to your licensee to check uh, actually 
save, might save you a little bit of time mm, as well in the editing yeah. process. You send it to them, you go, yeah, can you check it to make sure that I haven't said anything wrong? And they'll let you know if you have. They probably let you know if there's a gap or something missing or, you know, as well. So, uh, yeah, it's not, not a bad opportunity, I reckon, to send it to them, uh, get them to do part of your editing for you. <laughs> so there's SOA vet- vetting and podcast vetting. <laughs> Well, that's true because, I mean, at the end of the day, licensees, yeah, they, it's their um, backsides on the line as well. So they, they're going to want to know that you are not putting them in a position where they can going to get a massive fine. Yeah, yeah. I think it'd be very difficult to do, but I understand, you know, these companies, they don't want to wear too much risk and there is a lot of risk. So, uh, yeah, I guess we'll, we'll leave it at that. Putting all that aside, I think um, podcasting is on, on its way up still. I think it's a long way to go up. You were mentioning just before a couple of really interesting things like. Yeah, yeah. So absolutely. So um, I listened to a podcast uh, this week actually with Seth Godin on it, talked about the how it's now becoming mainstream in the US. Obviously, we're not there yet in Australia, but it's getting there. Um, but the, the big points that that I that I learned in the last couple of weeks around podcasting were and, and why it's something that should be taken seriously. Um, things like, um, you know, last year's, um, Spotify spent like five hundred million dollars on podcasts and podcast relating assets, so they're taking it really seriously. Um, Apple are taking it really seriously. They've now they've taken their um, their iTunes app and split it into two and created a whole new podcast. So they're they're investing heavily um, in in podcasts. You've got uh, Google now starting to index podcasts, so the information that's coming out and and listening to podcasts and trying to then put podcasts on the front page of Google um, so you've got, uh, you've got that happening you've got people like Joe Rogan making a crap load of money out of advertising on it you've got um, you know we've got Alexa snippets there's just so many of the big global companies that we know that are really taking podcasting seriously it's not just a whole lot of guys like you and I <laughs> in the basement you know uh, talking into a microphone and seeing what uh, seeing what happens it's that these big companies are taking it really seriously yeah 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 which I mean, it. There's so many pluses, and we're going to go through, you know, a bit of a, a, a couple of page plan um, that uh, Fraser's been nice enough to to put together. We'll also upload it to XY so that it's you know available to download there. So if you're thinking about starting a podcast, um, I think this is probably a really good place to start. And we've also seen the success of a couple of uh, direct-to-consumer podcasts, Glenn James's My Millennial Money, and there was that spin-off out of uh, Shameless. Um, oh, goodness, the, the name escapes me, but she's done very, very well. She's in the money? That's the one. That's exactly yep. the one, yeah. So they're both um, done from a financial advisor's point of view to the direct-to-consumer and, and killing it, yep. right? And Victoria Devine. That's that's exactly yep. the one. Um, and so between those two, I think they've set the standard that says there is a huge appetite for this. Um, and by no means is it flooded. So let's um, – actually, before we go into this, um, there's just one thing I want to say. You can either write blogs for content creation, which is qu- kind of difficult. Um, I've written a fair bit of stuff at this stage in my life, and I hate it. <laughs> it's really hard. Um, having a conversation, on the other hand, comes a lot more naturally. People tend to do a lot more talking than they do writing. So as far as content creation is concerned, it is an easier form of content creation and content creation is the best form of marketing there is. Yeah. I actually heard something the other day too, which I'm going to just regurgitate for you guys. It was talking about the idea of like um, short clips, YouTube ads, YouTube um, you know, video clips, um, short blogs. And the, the comment was, that stuff's all junk food. You know, the, the, the high sugar marketing style, quick, you know, has a little bit of information. It's, oh, we're only going to give you the sweet stuff. We're mm-hmm. not going to give you warts and all. Uh, but with a long form podcast, that's more like the health food. Yeah, yeah. That, that's probably uh, more accurate. Typically, XY goes around that 45 to an hour mark. I know um, My Millennial Money does a little bit shorter, around half an hour. So, um, yeah, I guess... As to my mind, I'm used to, I'm well worn. I have an internal clock that, that for an hour conversation, it's just meetings in life, in finance, and, and I'm just so used to com- conversing for an hour that it just translates quite well over to, to podcasts. So in as far as content creation is concerned, obviously it's on the way up, podcasts, and it's the easiest form of marketing and it's the most valuable form of marketing. So 
Um, with all that in mind, shall we get started? Yeah, let's do it. Cool. So uh, the first question that is asked, we've got here, is who exactly are you helping? Yeah. So so we'll give just a little bit, bit deeper in the context. We've created this sort of two-page plan mm. to set up before you do your podcast. So if you want to set up a podcast, jump onto the XY app, download this as a resource, start filling it in, and we'll go through each of the questions uh, and have a chat about each one. But, but if you wanted to download the resource uh, and start filling it in, uh, again, Someone like Trish, if you want to try and take this plan to your licensee, yeah. might, help, might help show them what it's all about. Um, to, so essentially it's the idea of is a, you know, like there's a one-page business plan. There's all these types of plans where you can go and just put these down. But if you've just got the questions you're answering, you're going to end up with a decent plan at the end of it. That's a really good context. So uh, the question, who are you helping? Yeah, and this is a this is a really good question because you've got to remember that you're not just doing it for your own sake, you're not just doing it for, you know, like what, what, what are you actually doing? And if you're not helping someone at the other end, well, no one's going to listen to it, especially in the long form. Um, but it's really around defining your target market, saying, okay, am I, um, am I after, you know, talking to helping this person? Um, and I think at Trish, we spot what we're talking about, Trish, uh, I think hers was around the spouses of uh, military personnel. Yeah. Okay. So that's um, so, so quite defined as in these, these are the challenges they face, these are the things that, uh, that concern them, these are the conversations that they would, would be having with other people in that, in that s- space. So um, just understanding, you know, who is your market? Who, who are you going to um, talk directly to? Who's the, who's the person you're going to visualize when, you, when, you, that you, when you're asking somebody or answering something? Um, and, you know, what are their pains and challenges and, and all those sorts of things? So very much similar to, you know, your business type if you if you're an advisor and you look after you know you know x y clients or millennials or whatever then that's who you know you're obviously just trying to work out exactly who you're talking to because the whole thing about you know having these conversations is you don't necessarily want to try and appeal to everyone you just want to appeal to the people who need or want to listen to you and that those people are going to get really engaged and you're gonna you know get rid of those that aren't so, you know, I don't, I don't be polarizing, be slightly opinionated. I think that's one of the questions later, but it's really around just, just determining your target market. Yeah. If you think about it um, from an uh, especially a new world of an advice, and if I was to summarize everything that's been going on with the changes in advice, it's looking like around about uh, a handful up to maybe $5,000 a year per client is what was kind of, I think, where the government is wanting advisors to get to. Now, I'm definitely not going to comment on whether that's good or bad. I can tell you there's going to be a lot of people pushed out of the market. So from that point of view, it's bad. Um, But we're definitely at XY all about sort of tackling what is the current environment and rather than sort of hampering on it too much, like what are the next steps? So if if you think about probably around $5,000, and you can look after, uh, say, 100 clients in that environment on an ongoing basis. You'd be looking at a, a revenue of $500,000 a year, which is quite a good lifestyle business. Um, and how do you get that 100 people? Well, if your podcast is uh, targeting a, a niche that even if only like 1,000 people are listening to it, um, there's probably going to be 10% of that audience that end up becoming clients. And so it's not even like you need to create this ginormous podcast and earn money via advertising. I mean, ultimately, as an advisor, you want to create uh, relationships with people at scale. So you have one conversation, a 1,000 people listen. Um, out of that 1,000, you'd probably be hoping for 100 people to put their hand up and say, actually, I want to work with this advisor And it also just makes the whole relationship so much easier from the get-go because they feel like they know you, they walk in, they go, actually, I know all this stuff about you, you don't need to tell me, I'm already here. Yeah, you certainly don't have to um, start by informing them of how much knowledge you have on the the topic because you're already the expert, right? You're the person that's, that's produced the most content on that that they have seen. You might not be the most ever, but that they have seen and they're obviously following the content that you're following because they're interested in that topic. So it's, it's just a matter of, um, yeah, you know, I couldn't agree more. Fight, fight, niche your target market down, work out who you want to talk to 
and just speak directly to that person and you'll end up with, um, you know, turning people away that aren't your ideal client, the person that you can help the most and the person you can help the most will end up coming towards you. Yeah, exactly. And which sort of fall, folds into the next question or, or statement, which is, you know, it's okay to not be everything to all people. It is okay to have polarizing views and it is okay to sort of put forward ideas that you think are solutions to problems that you're an expert on because you're talking on it anyway. Yeah, I think it's, it's even more than okay. It's actually what you should be doing, right? Because if you are not the best person to help that particular client or you don't relate to them or you can't see yourself having a long-term working relationship with that person it's kind of your duty not to get to involved with that person you know you, you do actually want to polarize and create some some beliefs and values and, and you really, really want to get your own beliefs and values across to uh, you know on your podcast so that um so that that actually happens naturally yeah so people then self-select and you end up you know not actually having to select your clients they select you because your beliefs and values are aligned with theirs and an easy way to do that is just simply to let your personality your individual personality shine through into the podcast so not only are you conversing and talking about the topics that you're an expert on and want to educate people on both potential new clients and existing clients um, but also you're talking about it in a way that is just authentically you. So how would you say, do, do you have any sort of tips and tricks on how to get that across? What? Yeah, well, again, it comes back down to that. What are your opinions? What are your opinions? What do you stand for? Um, you know, what, what are the things that you want to, would, would push forth? Um, you know, I think this, and, and how do you talk? I mean, I think Ben Nash is the classic at this, right? You know, he speaks a little bit differently to everybody else. He, he you know, he, he mentions things, how he sees them. There's no holding back. And that's him. Yeah. Right. And so his authenticity shines through on the videos he does and the conversations he has. And it's the same person you see when you sit in front of him. It's the, you know, I think he's a classic example of, you know, allowing his own authentic personality to shine through. And I guess we can all get a little bit involved in the, in the, you know, vanilla financial services professional um, route where we only say the correct things in the correct way um, rather than actually, you know, trying to be ourselves. Yeah, um, you know, as a as a, a mate of Ben's for quite a while, I can say that um, his authentic self certainly shines through in a more positive light uh, on the big screen than it does in person. But uh, <clears throat> we'll just leave it there. Um, kidding, Ben. You know, I love you. So, uh, okay. Well, on that then, how do you? What are tips, fails, wisdoms? You know, personal stories. What are some of the ways that uh, people can, you know, stay within um, the, the guidelines of what a great podcast looks and sounds like and what are some things to avoid? Yeah, I really like this comment around tips, um, fails and wisdom because um, you really it's, really, it's a really good idea to work out what are some of your stories and there's different ways that you can look and work out your stories. But you'll be, the, the things that you sort of say all the time. Um, now, to me, the wisdom is the scenario of you, somebody learned something somewhere they applied it, it worked or it didn't work. Either or. It doesn't matter if it worked or if it didn't work. They learned something out of that and that's where the wisdom is. right? So, um, you know, tried this thing, it failed dismally. Okay, now that person who's listening doesn't have to go and try that thing. Right? Mm. They're, they're, they're learning from that collective wisdom of the, of the group. So um, I guess when you're thinking about, you know, what are some of those stories that can create, uh, you know, tried this thing, it worked. Tried this thing, didn't work. Like, so what, like if you can go through and maybe put some of those stories and ideas together, it creates a really good flow of conversation around, you know, it's not, I'm not just here to tell you to do this thing. I'm here to tell you that this person tried this thing, it worked, or this person tried this thing and it didn't, and then the, and the outcome was, was it was X. So, um, you know, going through and whatever the topic of your podcast is to put some of those ideas and stories down, it would be really good to, you know, get as many of those listed out as you can because that that's just for a provide some really good content for you in the future episodes. Yeah, you put forward a really good point because the thing with a lot of people that I noticed who would get advice uh, when I was advising was or were people who were quite capable in life and they would do a lot of things really well and then there was just a gap in their understanding as to their personal finance situation and maybe it wasn't even their entire personal finance, financial situation 
Perhaps it was just even a piece of it. And I think, yeah, you, you sort of put forward a really good point, which is, which is you can talk about the stories of how the lives of your clients before they became your clients, what they were doing well, like Federer getting, you know, and keeping his tennis coach. There's no one in the world that's better than Federer, but still there's people out there saying, actually, you, you, you can tuck in your elbow just a little bit here or whatever, you know, tennis people talk about. I certainly don't know. Um, and something about tennis and elbows, uh, that, that's about as the, the limit of my knowledge. Um, but when people would become clients, it wasn't always a massive overhaul that needed to happen. Perhaps it was just they, there was a, a deficiency in one or two areas. And so you can talk about, actually, this was a, an example of a client that came in. They were doing all this stuff. They were doing all this wrong stuff and all this right stuff. And this is the problem that they got themselves into. Um, so avoid that if you can. And this is what we kind of did to help them out of it. Yeah, p- people like following the stories of people that are like them as well. So it's like, you know, the Federer example is a hard one to grasp because <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm nearly there, but nowhere near. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, like somebody like me who did this thing and, you know, it failed or something that like me, they did this thing and it worked. And and so so they don't have to be like mammoth stories about how you climb Mount Everest that time. But, um, but they're just little conversations and stories and they're, they're the ones that actually have the most impact. So it's not about going through and what are the big occasions in my life that time when you did this thing. No, what are the small things that you helped, the small claim that you did, you know, and, and it, it didn't seem like much at the time but it meant a hell of a lot to that person because they were going to be blah. Um, those are the kinds of stories that you really want to try and, and nut out and, and put down a list of them and, and keep listing them, you know, if, if you're creating podcasts, then keep a list of stuff like that that happens and look out for it and little stories. And it doesn't even have to be your story. It could be, you know, another advisor's story about what they did in that situation. And that works as well. Yeah, it's a really good point. I mean, you, you can never copyright an idea. It's not like something has happened and therefore you can't talk about it. Of course, you, you talk about everything that you learn um, from your entire you know, ecosystem of where you're learning from, um, which goes into the next question. Uh, question which is what is your podcast episode framework and it doesn't have to be what we're talking about like you don't have to talk about clients although I think that's a an endless pool of uh, content and I don't think you'll ever be you'll ever be in a situation where um, you don't have content to talk about but that's not the only option right you can talk about hey this is um, franking credits and how this franking credits relates to my um, my clientele base, which is people that own you know fish and chip shops or whatever it is. Yeah. So the big thing around f- like the framework of the podcast is, you know, what what are you going to do? Are you going to do a solo episode where it's just you talking, and are you just going to be talking about whatever it is? And in that case, you want to try and come up with a framework that is um, maybe story based, but also comes up with a a framework that goes right. We're going to talk about this topic today. Uh, we're going to talk about this is the, the all of the the pains that went with it. There was some decisions to be made. You know, you want to, you want to find try and find some journey through the uh, the hero's journey is one you could do. You know, and there was the adversity, and then they the, did this thing, and it, it got worse, and then you did this other thing, and it got better. And at the end of it, it was it was an amazing learning from this for this cat for this situation or the story. So you get, there's a lot of frameworks out there that you can go and have a look at. Just find one. Um, that you're really happy with and and that could be your framework but if you continue with that framework then your listeners will get to understand this is how you present the content and and they can go along with the flow it's, there's no massive surprises halfway through so for example with my podcast when i interview advisors i always sort of we just do the introduction and then i get them to tell their story from the beginning how they get into advice and we sort of start in the past we work our way through to the now. We talk about all the stuff they're doing now in their business that helps their clients. And then we talk about the future and it has that flow of, you know, the past, the present and the future. And so that's just sort of a framework that I use um, consistently when it comes to interviewing advisors. That's awesome. Um, so let's get maybe moving on to a little bit more of the operational functional side of podcasting. Um, who is going to do what? Yeah, this is a really big part because uh, obviously whenever you start a podcast, the idea is great, you have it, and then, and then you think, well, I'm just going to put push record, and, and, and you do, and then um, then what? You know, like, where's it going to go? <laughs> um, and so when it comes to this part of the 
you know, who's going to do what. There's, there's a lot of different moving parts to it. And, you know, like you've got to start with the original. Who are you going to talk to? If you're going to talk to somebody, do you need to book an appointment? Right? Do, you, do you need to get them and, and, and who's going to do that part? Then there's the preparation. If you're going to interview somebody or the preparation, if you're doing a solo episode to get the information ready. And that, you know, you've got to work out how much time all these things are going to take. And then that might be a 30-minute time frame. And then um, you might move on to the actual recording of the podcast. And as you said, if you're sort of a 15-minute podcast or a 30-minute podcast, or a, you, you sort of need to make sure you've got that time settled. Um, you then... If you're doing an intro after the podcast, which I'd suggest you, you record the podcast and then you do the intro because then you know what's coming up, obviously, because you've already you, you've been there, um, then that's going to take time. You've got to schedule to write that, in, that intro and to record it. Then it goes off for editing um, and you either edit it yourself, which you put your time in the diary, or you can get it done externally um, by plenty of editing services around. Um, then you've got to come back and you've got to check it. Right, and you've got to go through and check it. So, so there's there's all these time zones, and or, or, you know, a bit of time. It's a bit like doing an SOA, you know. It's like writing the SOA is one part, but then you've got to check it. Uh, and so, there's all these little bits that you've got to go through, and then after that, you've got to have it uploaded um, to whatever media platform's going to push it out, and then you've got to work out how you're going to promote it. Yeah, yeah. Now, that is an awesome step through because it's it's one of those things that I guess unless someone explains it to you in such a step-by-step fashion, you don't really take into consideration. But at its most simple uh, concept, it's literally just an audio file that you put on the internet. That At its most simple concept, that's all it is. So it's actually far simpler than I guess some people think it is. Um, it's just all those steps are producing the podcast and getting it into the hands of people and making sure it's of good quality, yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a handful of additional steps there. And so, yes, yeah, so I think it's really important to work out how you're going to do before you, before you start, how you, who's going to do each part? Yep. Are you going to do it personally or are you going to outsource all that side of it? Um, some of it you can't outsource, obviously the recording part, <laughs> that's you. <laughs> uh, and, and, and Hey, mom, can you just uh, <laughs> interview that guy? <laughs> I'd do it, but I'm uh, really busy today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, absolutely. So it's not all outsource. Um, but with that said, it's not a bad idea to do it at least you know, by yourself at first. Download Audacity. It's a pretty easy editing tool. Uh, you know, go onto Libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N.com. It's $5 a month. Upload it there and just play around with it. It's, you know, it might take you a, a month of playing around, but you'll, you'll definitely get your head around what's happening. I'm okay. I'm uploading an audio file to the internet and then it's pushing it out to all these, um, what are, I mean, they're they're called, um, podcast clients. Are they, is that what they're called? Yeah. Well, I'm just going back to the software thing. There's plenty of free software. Yeah. So that, that's, that's a really cool part. You, you, like you said, there's plenty of free software you can edit on. There's plenty of free tutorials on YouTube and how to use oh, yeah. all these things. Um, so, you know, if you, it's not just going on and playing. You can go through and, and you can just watch somebody else teach you within a three or four minutes and, and, and you know how to use it. And then once you've figured out what you're doing and how you're going to produce it, uh, when will you release your first episode and how often are you going to release it? Yeah, this is a really big part of the, of the plan putting this into once you understand what's involved in the manual actual actions of producing the podcast you then need to work out how how much time that's going to take you and how much time then you you want to put into your diary over the next 12 months and i always say over the next 12 months because there's so many podcasts that start and don't continue they get to like episode seven and then there's pod fade um and it it just dies off because uh, i didn't really have it planned out and i didn't get to it this week so that planning Putting it in, in your diary is really important. So put it in your diary for the next 12 months. It's in there. That's what you're going to do on a Wednesday morning from 9 a.m. till midday or whatever it's going to be, right? So, um, And so, you, so you've got it in there. So plan. Then then give yourself a date. I want to release the first you know episode on this day, which means I really need to start you know recording a batch of them. Um, and that, that'll give you a t- time to work back from to say how much work do I need to do in between now and then to get it online. Yeah, and... I mean, weekly is a very good place to start, isn't it? If you can, if you can just get it done weekly, um, especially when once you've got your head around what's happening, once you've got a couple of things outsourced and it costs you a couple of bucks to do all that, um, you can typically get away with, 
you know, like just the just the time that you're looking to do the podcast, the record the podcast, plus maybe I don't know half an hour of organising um, on top of that. Um, yeah, week, weekly is certainly the most popular. Um, there's a, there's a few podcasts that um, advisors do that are fortnightly. I know Adele Martin's one is fortnightly. Yeah, um, and then some people do it monthly. I know um, Stanford Brown do their podcasts uh, monthly. Yep. they do a monthly edition. Um, so it really just comes back down to you know how much time do you want to put to it. Um, you know, a monthly episode is better than no episode. And it so is, but th- there is a fair bit of research around doing twice a week or three times a week. It not only gets uh, more listens, obviously, creating more content, but it grows your audience quicker. Yeah, correct. Yeah, so so the they've done a lot of research on um, like five podcasts a week. You know, if you drop one to four, does it make a difference? Not really. If you drop one to three, it doesn't make a difference. Not really. It's two it sort of made a bit of a difference, but to one made the difference. So between, you know, that that two podcasts a week w- is is considered to be the fastest growing episode length, as in as in the amount of time you put in versus the amount of time growing. Because a, a podcast every day is going to take you half a day, yeah. <laughs> every day to produce, yeah. and you're not necessarily going to grow the audience by that much as fast. So that that value for money bang for buck bang for buck type thing is around uh one to two a week yeah yeah awesome um so then the question becomes uh what systems and schedules do you need to implement to make this happen consistently right um i would say having a uh, our podcast producer he he expects new content from me each week right so if i don't deliver him content he, he gets a bit grumpy he starts knocking on my door going okay Clayton we you know we actually do need to uh, get this up and running so uh, for me it's um, it's less I guess a, a schedule and it's just something I know I need to deliver to someone and it's kind of pretty easy you know if I know I need to deliver it to someone then I just get it done it's the accountability piece right it it's is. the same thing that advisors go through with clients and their cash flow right? yeah, it's yeah. the same thing so who is that person going to be so yes you can put it in the diary but who are you accountable to who's the person that's going to go have you done that thing yet why haven't you done it I'm waiting for it you're holding me up yeah and that and that and if you've got somebody that is editing for you like like you do yes. um then it's a great thing for them to be saying I needed that thing this morning yeah. Is it, have you done it yet? And you're like, ah, yeah. need to do it now because <laughs> I'm now, you know, even though it might not be going out till, you know, a week from now, whatever it might be, or yeah. two weeks, it, it's having that person that pushes you to make sure that that stuff gets done because otherwise it's, you know, one of those things that falls off. No, absolutely. So we, um, that's more operational. Now let's assume that we've got an up and running podcast, right? And as we both know, it's actually not rocket science. You just record the audio, put it on the internet. Um, now, and hope you don't get any technical difficulties all the way. <laughs> yeah, oh my goodness, <laughs> which we've all had. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, how do you promote it? Yeah. So the big thing around this is, uh, and this was comes back to um, this comes back down to a comment that was I, I remember very clearly from I think the FinCon we went to back in 2016, yes. or something, uh, was around the idea that if you've just been an hour creating um, some content, any content, whether it's a blog or a podcast. How many hours should you spend promoting it? Because it doesn't help anybody unless they hear it or read it. Right? So you, the whole idea of your content is you wanted to help somebody with something. So don't be don't be so shy as to start promoting it. And I know in America they have a different attitude towards you know promoting their content. And here in Australia we tend to be really ah oh, you know I'll just put it out and if someone wants to consume it I won't won't be too pushy on it. But you know the the saying was then three times as long promoting content as you do creating the content yeah there's no there's no point going on to create new content if you haven't promoted the last one yeah that to me that uh it'd be very difficult to do but i I understand the concept of it um i split it in my mind as to what are the publishing platforms and what are the promotional platforms because all of all of this stuff's free right so i'm going to publish on Libsyn, which is going to push out to the Apple phones, which is going to push out to Stitcher, which is the Android phones. It's going to push out to CastBox. It's going to push out to all the, all the, um, uh, all the, the apps that people are using, right? Um, I also publish on YouTube. Um, even though it's a much smaller audience, it's only about 10% of the audience. Uh, there are people that just prefer YouTube and don't want to go to move across to the podcast. Um, and then you have your promotional uh, platforms and again they're all free these are your facebook groups your facebook pages um these are your instagrams these are your twitters 
Um, and and this year, the XY is expanding into Ale- Amazon Alexa and Google Home. Uh, for and, and the XY app. And the XY app, sorry, yes. <laughs> Although, yeah, that's a very good point. That's a, On XY itself, yes, you will find it. <laughs> that's a very good point. We're just not a multi-billion dollar Silicon Valley company yet. Yet. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so the promotion is a really interesting part. You know, like it's around... Um, you know, getting it out there, getting the information out there and the word out there. Yes, it's a little bit advertisey. Uh, oh, in mate, a but, way, but it's but it's content. It's and and there's no problems with it. Uh, like I'm sort of bashful, in, genuinely in over promotion, but promoting the podcast. My God, it's just like, hey, this is the thing that I had the conversation for, and if it's genuinely yes. like valuable, you should you should be proud of it. And I also think in my own brain that um that wait. Your own? <laughs> My own brain, as opposed to when I'm thinking in someone else's brain. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so if somebody if somebody has taken the time to be a guest on your show, you owe it to them to thank them publicly and celebrate totally. the time that they've given up. Right? Totally. So, you know, you put a post on LinkedIn and say, hey, like, thanks, Clay, for coming on the podcast. Yeah. You're, you know, appreciate it, right? Um, and then you get it and you go, ah, oh, you're welcome. And then and it has that sort of social share content and some people jump on saying, oh, Clay, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I, I feel like you owe it to that person to at least acknowledge them publicly that they did a good thing and gave you some of their time. Yeah, if, especially if, if it's an interview style podcast, definitely, absolutely, definitely. Because ultimately that person is just going on to help other people. Which is, I mean, a noble thing in and of itself. So, just a shout out to them is a is a is a big deal in our in our day and age. Yeah. Now, let's talk strategy. Let's talk why. Uh, you know, are, are you looking to make money from the podcast itself, or are you looking to draw in more clients? Are you looking to service ongoing clients? Are you looking to do all of it? In you know, why would someone? Why is someone doing this podcast? Yeah, exactly right. So. There's a few different things with regards to strategy, you know, like wh- why should somebody care? Why should they care is a, is a big question that um, uh, like uh, that some of the podcasts, you know, like you pitch me a podcast and the very first question is why should I care? Like why if I'm a listener um, and if there's no why should I care there, then, then you know, maybe you need to find, find the why. <laughs> um, but yes, so strategy is an interesting piece. So um, the podcast is generally part of a strategy. It's not the strategy. Right, you're. It's part of a business. You're not. You're, if you're a financial advisor, your business is financial advice. Your business is not podcasting. Um, so it, it's part of your financial advice strategy. Whether it's a client acquisition strategy, whether it's a retention strategy, whether it's the fact that you know you charge your client fees and you want to provide them something every month. And guess what? No one reads the newsletter anymore. So let's do something different, right? Um, and that could form part of the information that constant. We, I hate the word financial literacy, but you know that constant information or things that you're producing for them, which you know provides that ongoing trust, and, and they come in to see you uh, if it's an annual review, and they've already heard you twelve times throughout the year, so it feels more you know like like that. So, so what is the strategy? Is it is it retaining clients? Is it is it getting new clients, or is it both? It's a really good point. Can you make a podcast private? Is there a way? I guess technically, yeah, you just wouldn't upload it to Libsyn, right? You'd just probably upload it to your website. Um, and then that would be – so that is definitely a, a potential strategy. Yeah, which would you could be, send it out through, through email to those yeah, – to your existing, just to your yeah. clients. Um, I hadn't considered that one, but that would – if you're looking for an, another item for your FTS, if you're looking for ongoing education, if you're looking to add value, again, scalably, you have one conversation, it's consumed hundreds of times – um, that's not a that's not a bad idea. You could even do both. Why wouldn't you have one for your current client base and one for uh, you know potential client acquisition? Yeah, definitely knowing being clear on why, um, and then also because if you end up outsourcing this sort of stuff, it can cost you a couple of bucks, right? So, um, how much money are you willing to lose uh, in order to hit why you're doing it? So, if you're putting in um, X amount of dollars to service your ongoing client base, but that you see that as a good use of your time and money, great. Or what is your marketing budget, right? So if, if you're looking to spend um, X amount of dollars on acquiring new clients and then this is a part of the strategy, obviously it's not going to work in a week, you know, maybe give it a year. But um, yeah, that there, there is a cost and, and I guess you've got to have it in your mind 
at what stage will you know if it's worthwhile or not? Yeah, there's there's definitely an investment cost in regards to setting up and, and running a podcast, and and well, as there is with a newsletter and as there is with any other marketing that you do. So it's it's good to understand and appreciate and budget for that cost. So you've actually got the money sitting there ready to go every you know whatever it might be. Um, to, to pay for those things so that then you know that you don't get upset with paying them because they're in the budget that that was what was forecast so you know thinking then if you are looking at client acquisition how many clients might I need to get in the next 12 months not this week um, to pay for the 12 months of podcast editing because uh, you know I think it's it's a long form um, content strategy it's also a long time content strategy so uh, people might go back and listen to you you get, listen to an episode and go back and listen to six or seven episodes and then make the decision they want to work with you straight away. Or somebody might sit there for six or 12 months listening to your episodes before they even reach out. And in that case, then it's like a 12 month investment in their time that, and then, you know, they come to you and say, oh, I've been listening to you for 12 months and now we want to catch up. So um, the money you spent 12 months ago has been invaluable to, to, you know, creating the podcast for the client you're getting, you know. And yeah. And the big difference is because the podcast is, you know, essentially sitting on the shelf to download at any point in time. It operates, and I'm sure you see this, you know, each each podcast, um, at least a couple of people are sort of going back um, and, and XY has been doing this now for four years and um, it hasn't always been outstanding quality like it is right now using this recording studio. Um, and yet people are still going back and, and using um, previous content so it's it's you do the work once not only is it immediately scalable but it's also scalable over years yeah absolutely people do go back and listen to episodes that you recorded a long time ago yeah it's crazy um now two more questions here or two more topics to to discuss would you do like who what you know plan out my first 10 podcasts just to get them in the can before sort of taking it to that next step, just so you know that you've got a handful up your sleeve. You know, you've got to, if, especially if you're aiming for once a week, you've got 10 weeks up your sleeves, so you're not chasing your tail by the time you choose to start doing them weekly. Yeah, I'd start with a list of at least 10. Um, and that might be 10 people you want to talk to if you're doing an interview style like I do, if it's um, or, or 10 topics that you want to cover. Um, just just give yourself plenty of, of runway and then you can and you can pick and choose if something might happen or there might be something that's you know topical at the time so you, you pull that one from the list and it was further down but you bring it up it doesn't really matter but the idea is you, if you've got at least 10 then you'll get a, a bit of a roll and by the time you get you know and just keep updating that list by the time you've recorded those 10 you've probably got another 10 that you've thrown onto the back of the list so i would try and have a bit of a list a lot of people have like uh there's, I've heard of things like the Dream 100 list where people have like a, a dream list of people they want to get on the podcast and they're constantly working away at people that are going to be impossible to get and as well as, you know, the ones that they might know and those sorts of things. They're always just bringing, looking at the list to go, right, who's next? Who else am I going to book or or what else am I going to talk about? It's interesting you say that because I, I had a dream list of one, Fraser, and I've uh, hit it today. <laughs> Sorry, that person couldn't show up. <laughs> oh, mate, it's you. <laughs> Um, all right, so last question. What do we need to get started, right? So uh, in terms of actual hardware. Now, I'm sitting in front of the coolest setup in uh, in podcasting, at least uh, that I've ever been a part of. Um, but you don't need the, the fanciest stuff to begin with. I would definitely suggest that... Uh, the expected quality is probably beyond that of a telephone call at this stage. So if you can get even a, uh, a Blue Yeti, which is a couple of hundred bucks, you can buy it from JB Hi-Fi. Um, you know, it's something that's going to give at least a level of professional sounding. It's not difficult. And then you can push up from there. So I know you spent a couple of grand on this setup, um, which I adore and I'd love to copy um, but you don't have to start with that. Yeah, so so the microphone is probably the biggest um, thing that you want to make sure is is okay. Um, but you can get um, like an Audio Technica twenty one hundred, I think it is, which is a fairly good standard microphone. It has a USB port as well as um, um, you know ports to go into into a you know a, an interface. Um, but it's uh, it's around eighty bucks. Right. Oh. Um, these Rode, uh, really good quality Rode microphones that we use now, they're like 150 bucks. 
Yeah, nothing. So it's, it's not, it's not going to um, break the bank. Um, and then you've got to have it recording onto something. So the idea is what's it going to record onto. There, generally, you can record it onto a computer, a hard drive, onto a onto a um, a hard disk. Um, those are the sorts of things. Just something that's going to capture that um, that sound. Now, you can actually have an interface, which is something that goes between your computer and the microphone, which will be able to change volume levels and all those sorts of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you'll also be able to have record separate tracks. So, for example, if you and I are on separate tracks and my file is louder than yours, we can adjust the levels afterwards. So. Those are the things to think about. Apart from that, it's mostly free software. You know, it's you know the hardware itself is the microphone and your computer, which you've probably already got, no doubt, um, and you can just record straight onto it. Uh, after that, you've got you know maybe a Zoom meeting where you can record it like a Zoom. Um, you've got uh, we've got um, re- recording software like a um, uh, um, Audacity. Audacity is a really good one, and again, free to use and yeah. easy to and easy to work. So you can just jump on tutorial and and, and find out about that. Um, you know, there's other recording softwares, um, OBS. There's all sorts of re- free recording stuff um, that you can use. And and after that, it's really just the you know your imagination. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and one of the coolest things you can do if there is. Uh, you know, a, a desk that's sitting in front of you with a couple of cool lights. You can always do this. Ah, oh, yes! Congratulations, well done, Fraser Jack, for joining us. Hey, we haven't quite finished. We got a couple of things. <laughs> oh, do we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, mate, that yeah. was such a cool little. I know. Uh, we'll, outro. To, we'll do a little outro soon. Um, but the other things that you need to think about is some artwork. You need to get a little logo done up. Um, yes. and you can do that on Canva if you want to start with that and then work your way on, into getting a designer to, to do the artwork. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing would be some some royalty-free music. Yeah. Royalty-free. Definitely. The, or, 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 or you can purchase, like, it's a couple of hundred bucks, but yeah. it's not much. And, the, and it says, you know, you can use it in a podcast. Correct. And and you can also get your own thing recorded if you know somebody as well that you want to do an intro yeah. to. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's, there's those to set up at the beginning um, and obviously your podcast name. Yes, definitely. Um, mate, thank you genuinely this time uh, for coming on to the podcast in your own studio. It was awesome to discuss this. I think it's a conversation that there's probably more than a handful of advisors out there that are, that have been listening for a while and thought, you know, how do I just kick this off? 2020, it's a good year to get going. It's still relatively early days and uh, yeah, there's a lot of opportunity ahead. There is. And so if you want to head over to the XY app and grab your copy of these questions, yep. uh, go over there and download it and uh, and start putting your plan together and um, let us know how you go. Awesome, man. Should we play the outro music now? Let's do it. Outro. Yeah. Thanks, Clayton. Woo! <laughs>